What's up guys, welcome back to Jungle, back to another video. And in today's video, we are working with the i3 once again, the E92M3. I did call them a little bit early, uh, earlier today, um, and they told me that they don't actually have a current update because my car is still in line for the frame shop. So that's still getting sorted, the E92M3, so we're still waiting on that, unfortunately. But in the meantime, I've been working on the i3 kind of behind the scenes, trying to get this thing to go in neutral or drive. I just want to get the car into the driveway because it is kind of way down on the driveway next to the main road. I'm not really too comfortable working down there. Plus, I don't really know if it's okay to work on a car and I don't want to you know annoy my neighbors and stuff so I mean my goal is just to get try to get the car inside the garage for the longest time and thankfully with Nick's help We finally figured out how to at least get it in neutral So now that we figure out how to get it in neutral I do want to you know strap it up pull it into the garage Hopefully I wish I had some kind of like winch or something I gotta put like right here uh, You know screw it down so I can pull my cars inside the garage, but we don't we're still gonna try to figure out a way to get that car Inside the garage if not inside the garage at least close to the house closer to the house because that thing is just too far out but in order to do that we're gonna need to actually remove the steering rack because the steering rack has the wheels angled in this direction I don't know if you guys can tell but it's facing this way so if I try to pull it up the driveway it's gonna go more towards the middle of the driveway instead of take up both spots and I can't even enter the garage anymore so the goal is to actually remove that steering rack angle both wheels to the opposite direction so when I pull up it's gonna go this way and at least it'll go inside the garage perfectly or at least on the driveway that is the goal also we're gonna try to remove this sway bar end link as well again we're just trying to clear up as much things here as possible I think removing the steering rack is definitely gonna clear up a lot of space and removing this is gonna clear up a lot of space so without further ado let's go ahead and get the steering rack out the sway bar in link and hopefully hopefully drag this thing up even further Guys, I just picked up this new tool. It's supposed to have 750 foot pounds of torque, and uh, this thing is not even busting off a nut that's very loose. So I don't know what's going on with this. Definitely gonna have to send this back now. And it looks like we're gonna have to work it at it the old fashioned way. All right, guys, so I got the bolt that holds this side together. Hold on, where is this thing? So if I grab this, you guys can see it. This whole side moves. But this side still has got a screw underneath the brake master. Now, the only way to do this is to actually remove all those lines, let brake fluid go all over the place, or drop the subframe a bit, and then actually get that screw out. So I'm actually gonna plan on removing the subframe, but I don't wanna do it here. So again, let's try to get this thing in the garage. Um, at this point, we do have tie rods disconnected from the wheels, so it should be able to at least turn the wheels the direction that we wanna turn them, um, and get this thing where we wanna move it. So. Uh, that is the goal. Wish me luck and hopefully this thing does not roll down Hopefully it does not disconnect from the strap because if it does we have a pretty busy road behind us I just want to get this thing up in the driveway and have the garage space to work inside of because I'm not a huge fan of working over here I'm not gonna lie Okay guys, this is not bad. At least we're kind of like, I think basically we're about a whole car length forward. Um, if we could try to get this in the garage with a couple other guys, I think we got to pull it. I tried getting this thing as short as possible, but there's no other way unless we have a couple more guys to help us push this thing inside the garage. In the meantime, this is better than having it right on the sidewalk, so I'm super happy about that. At this point, let's go ahead and get the truck out of here. I hope we can kind of maneuver this thing out of here because it's kind of a big boy. So now that we got the car 
somewhat up the driveway. It's a lot better than being all the way down the driveway and uh, less car noises and stuff because, again, busy road. We also got the truck out of the garage. That was an absolute mission. I'm happy that the truck's finally out. The car is where it needs to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking some more things off the car. And again, we're just trying to get that area where it needs to be cut and welded completely exposed. I'm currently in that situation where it's like, Nor, is it worth fixing this i3 or not? Because this is the worst damage I've ever had to deal with. And I'm reaching out to a bunch of people. Some of you guys saying go to Backyards Boys channel, hit them up on Instagram. I hit up VTuned as well. I hit up pretty much every other YouTuber that rebuilds cars because I'm kind of getting into the whole like bigger rebuilding scene. Like again, with framework and stuff like that, especially aluminum framework. And I can learn a thing or two from those other bigger channels. I think it'd be super dope to also do a collab. So hey, you never know what could happen. But at the same time, all those other YouTubers do live really far away. So if things don't really work out, they don't work out. I'm also trying to find an aluminum welder that's local. That is my biggest problem right now is finding an aluminum welder. What's actually find one that I'm more willing to actually spend the money to get that whole frame piece from BMW because it's very expensive and I don't want to order that frame piece and then end up having to scrap the car or something because we can't figure out who can fix it and we don't have anyone that can fix it. I know some of you guys said, Jay, just get a welder yourself and weld it yourself. And guys, welding aluminum is so, so, so much harder than welding steel or anything like that. People literally, I called them all my regular body shops and none of them are willing to do aluminum because they said, especially on the frame, if it's not welded properly, you literally drive and that would crack, just lose the front end. So a frame is very, very, very important and we don't wanna mess that up. So yeah guys, anywho, let's go ahead and just keep taking some more things off so we can clearly expose all the damage and possibly actually start reassembling some of this stuff because we have some new parts. Guys, now that I got the sway bar out of here, I was able to get the steering wheel centered, which means this thing should be straight now. Uh, so this thing obviously is cracked, but the reason why the steering wheel wasn't turning was because of the sway bar. That being said, I still wanna be able to steer this car onto a trailer, so I'm gonna go ahead and reattach both sides. Hopefully the steering is straight, or at least it goes with the steering wheel, because that's gonna make life a whole lot easier. We can get the car in neutral now, and if we can drive it straight or actually steer the car, that would be so much better. Yes, yeah, that is two more hairline cracks on the other like strut assembly. So that means we need to buy another piece for frame. We'll do the calculations later. And check that out guys, this wheel is officially straight, this wheel is officially straight, and the steering wheel actually turns the wheel. So at this point guys, the car is stripped as much as it really needs to be. That's gonna be pretty much the end of the stripping process. The next thing I kinda wanted to do is to work on the headlight. If you guys remember, the accident was from the driver's side, so I ended up picking up this headlight from eBay, and I noticed that he actually repaired the tabs himself. So this was a repaired tab, and all the tabs from the bottom were also repaired. I don't know if you guys can see all that stuff, all that marking stuff basically means this headlight was repaired. So I figured if they can actually repair a headlight like plastic welding, I wanna do the exact same to this one. We do have a bunch of broken tabs that came off both of my other headlights and uh, this actually came off of the other headlight as well. And if we can actually get all the tabs on this headlight good, then we actually have a perfectly good working headlight. This headlight has no cracks, just all the tabs are missing. There is four tabs on this headlight and all four of them are cracked. So the goal is, is to get all the tabs fixed on this headlight 
headlights. We have a pair of perfectly good working headlights. The headlights on this car is the BMW LED ones. These ones are super expensive. We're talking like 800 a pop. This one I actually picked it up for 500 with repaired tabs and it was missing the modules. My modules were all good so I actually ended up putting my modules on this one. So this one was definitely worth replacing because mine's was smashed but this guy it would just suck to throw out this one because honestly it's just the tabs. It works perfectly fine. There's no cracks in the lens. So yeah let's go ahead and see if I can actually fix this. Guys I really hope this works. I'm getting my thing charged up right here. Um, so basically they're saying to pretty much like stitch it in a way and then once you stitch them together you actually fill it in with some plastic. I've actually seen people who use zip ties before so if the zip tie method works that'd be kind of cool but uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and work on our first tab. The two tabs that I actually found that was on the car this one sits right over here and this one sits right over here. Um, literally perfect fitment <laughs> so if we could actually get one of these to work I'll be super hyped uh, but anyway let's go ahead and work on this one first because it's bigger and I feel like I can make more mistakes. Uh, but yeah basically what I found is that they basically just stitched it together so I'm gonna go ahead and just attempt this. I hope it works. Again I'm not a professional by any means but if this works I'll be pretty stoked. Uh, guys, um, <laughs> I did not think plastic welding is that amazing. We have all four tabs on here. Let me just show you guys. Uh, hopefully, I don't crack the glass right here. But I'm gonna grab it by this one. This one didn't even have any foundation. I basically grabbed a lot of the extra plastics that I had around and I just melted it around it. And uh, yeah, check that out, guys. Check that out. That is just crazy. Um, so yeah, that tab is in place. The rest of these tabs are in place. Check out that one right there. These two. Um, now I did try using zip ties to melt it into place to kind of use that as plastic, kind of like solder if you guys know what I mean. So I try to use uh, the zip ties as solder. I tried even using um, some of this, uh, what's it called? Steel wool because some people advise use steel wool. Some people advise I've um, used zip ties. Honestly, none of that stuff really melted good for me other than the original plastic. So I just had some extra uh, plastic that was off of the other headlight. I used that and it honestly came out amazing. So I'm super, super, super happy. Both my headlights now have good tabs on them, which means when we actually install these, all the tabs are gonna go in place. So I'm super stoked about that. End of the day, it's always good to learn something new and I'm just so happy because that's gonna save me so much money down the road. And even on this headlight, it just saved me from buying an entire $500 headlight Again. You know what I just realized guys? As soon as I finish a headlight, I realized I actually never showed you guys the inside of the i3. Let me go ahead and wash my hands and I'll show you guys why I actually kind of like the i3. First things first, I love this door handle. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. All jokes aside, this is kind of a pretty cool door handle. It's kind of like the same kind of door handles you see in supercars. I'm not gonna lie. I know it sounds kind of weird, but this is kind of a unique door handle. I actually, they have it in the G30 as well. So they actually had this since the 2014 in the i3. But anywho, uh, besides this beautiful airbag that's blowing right in your face, um, this screen's kind of crappy. This screen's kind of crappy. I'm not gonna lie. They're pretty, they're both pretty ugly. This one is just really small. It's not even the full size screen. But what is cool about this car is that this car actually has like the new uh, drive system. Them. I forgot what it's called, like iDrive 9 or something, but I've never actually had this setup before in any of my other BMWs. This is like the newest BMW I've ever had. And the, one of the main features, guys, that I absolutely love about this car, check that out, guys, 103 mile range is still on this battery. This car is supposed to get 150 mile range just on the electricity alone, and then with the hybrid Rex engine, she would get an extra 50 to 55 miles. So this thing can get over 200 mile range for less than five or $10. I think that's one of the coolest things ever. Now, when you actually say 
200 miles, that's a legit 200 miles. Not like your typical BMW half tank 200 miles, you know, you run out of that and probably, you know, an actual 50 miles of driving. No, this is an actual 200 miles, which can probably last you a week, possibly even two weeks for only five to $10 of gas. So that is insane because I spent in total about maybe, because me alone owning that V8 truck, owning the F80 M3, I mean, I spend probably somewhere in the ballpark of like five to $600 a month on gas. I drive a lot to get parts, um, to go check out cars all the time. I do so much things behind the scenes that honestly, I just spend so much money on gas and obviously day-to-day -day life stuff. You need to go get groceries, things like that. So I was like, you know what? Maybe get an i3 because the i3 is a kind of like a hatchback. You guys actually fold down these rear seats. You can put bumpers in here. You can put wheels in here. You can, this could be a parts runner. And at the same time, again, zero gas, which I think is super awesome. Just to put in perspective, I know some of you guys are gonna say, well, you still have to pay for electricity. Well, just to put in perspective, my dad owns a Tesla and uh, he's been fully charging that thing 200 miles range or 260 miles range every single day. And uh, every single day he charged it for an entire month. Now, Grant, he probably didn't actually use the 260 miles every single day, but he charges it every single day with a maximum range of 260. His electricity bill only went up by $45 the entire month. And he drives quite a bit as well. That's why he ended up getting the test. So $45 a month compared to what I spent five to 600 is a game changer. And also just to put it out there, $45 is like overkill too. Typically people only spend like 30 bucks. I don't know why it ended up being $45 for my dad. It should have only been like 30 or probably even 25. And you know, I'm not gonna get into all of that. I am not, trust me guys, I am not going like eco-friendly, no more M cars, none of that good stuff. I just like the fact that BMW actually made a car like this and I really did want to experience it. Um, and unfortunately, um, it doesn't look like it's gonna be anytime soon because this car needs a load of work. Another thing I really like about this car is its glove box. I think it's super cool the way you just put stuff inside of it. The dashboard is really, really, really open. You can literally put maybe a burger, cheeseburger, um, your laptop and just, you know, chill here. Two cup holders, your standard stuff in a daily. It actually has F30 mirrors. So you can actually put like M4 style mirror caps on here and actually have the carbon fiber mirror caps, which is pretty cool. These seats are actually really comfortable. And for the 2019, they come standard with like heated seats, backup camera, all that good stuff. This one surprisingly did not come with a sunroof. I'm just probably the only car I've ever owned that didn't have a sunroof. Actually, no, the F80 M3 does not have a sunroof. But other than the F80 M3, that is, this is the only other car that doesn't have a sunroof and it doesn't I, I don't know if it has a carbon roof I'm not sure it might actually have a carbon roof that's probably why but anyways guys this car is weird it's quirky there's so many little things I actually want to get into guys and show you guys probably when I remove all these airbags that are blown all over my face um I can't really show you guys all the details just yet but hopefully once we get everything cleaned up in the interior I'll go ahead and run it down through the entire interior and show you guys um the little quirks and little cool things about this car and why I think it's actually kind of a nice car that's gonna have to conclude the video thankfully we got the car up on the drive Way. we repaired one of our headlights we actually saved money right then and there the car officially goes in neutral and now we actually have steering so those are some huge 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 pluses we are making some progress on this thing let me know down below guys if this is a car you guys would rebuild or honestly would you just let it go back to the auction is this a little too far damage for you guys or would you guys actually commit and try to rebuild this and let me know if i'm actually impulsively um rebuilding this because obviously i picked it up thinking it had little or damage i didn't think it was gonna be this big of a project and i don't want this to turn up like being like the 7 Series. Well, we end up fixing everything and the 7 Series just kept on breaking down as many times as it really liked because it really didn't care about me whatsoever. I loved that car. I treated it so well. I wanted that to be the ultimate daily because it was an N54 7 Series, not the V8 7 Series, but it, it, it really hated me. It hated me. I fixed everything and it just kept on throwing up on me. Anyhow, let me know if I'm being impulsive once again on this car because I really can't control myself. Once I get a build, I'm the kind of guy that really likes to finish it even if it costs way more than what it's worth. So let me know down below, guys. This build is probably going to be costing me about twenty to $22,000 um, all set in stone. I'm into it about fifteen dollars right now. Should I cut my losses and get rid of this thing or should I finish the build? Let me know down below, guys. I'm actually very curious because this is one of those cars that I love it. I'm kind of getting emotionally uh, you know, attached to it, but at the same time, is it is it responsible? Is it, re is it, is it smart to actually pursue this build? Let me know down below, guys. Without further ado, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.